I saw how hard he worked. I saw how much he put into it. I saw the sacrifices that he was making. He wasn't partying. You know, he was 18 years old. He wasn't going out. And I asked him, I said, you know, what do you want to do in this league? And he said, I want to be one of the greatest ever. And I looked at him, he looked at me, I said, you will be. He was always bringing up questions that had to make me think. I was like, wait a minute, let me, let me think about this for a second. You know, it wasn't your, your everyday or normal questions that, that you normally expect from somebody that age. Kobe's questions was more of questions that he had been, you know, looking up, you know, the history of it and everything, and he wanted to ask you certain things that he felt, you know, that could help him in the future. It wasn't, you know, how was it like playing against Michael Jordan? Those are easy questions, you know. <laughs> He had, he had difficult questions. When you used to play against, you know, Isaiah Thomas, you know, you know, why did you always try to, you know, guard him straight up instead of trying to force him one way or another? I was like, what? You know, what, what, are, you, what are you watching? What you been looking at? You know, but that was Kobe. Every Hall of Famer that I know has had unbelievable talent, you know, but the thing that separates them is their work ethic is just phenomenal. And I witnessed it. You know, I, I saw magic. The attitude that he, was, that he had was always that, you know, in practice, we're not going to lose. And we're going to work so hard in practice that the game is easy. That was his mindset. And Kobe's was the same. And you put that along with great talent. And, and I tell people this all the time. Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady, probably more talented than Kobe. More athletic. But man, they didn't have that and that like he had. And not knocking neither one of them because those are two Hall of Famers as well. But... This kid was on a different planet. Kobe, he loved MJ. He never feared him, but he, he respected the hell out of him and he wanted to learn from him. So he would ask him questions, why are they playing? Eddie Jordan's story was, you know, to Kobe Bryant when he was gonna play against MJ was don't, you know, don't, don't stare at him, don't, you know, don't get him pissed off and all that. And, and you know, Kobe's like, what? Oh, I wanna look him dead in the face. You know, I want to see how he reacts. He said, you know, a lot of people think they're going to come in and be just pushing. He said, that ain't happening. And I was like, all right now, young man, hold it. <laughs> he was like, B, I'm telling you, that, no, I ain't, I ain't intimidated by nobody. And he wasn't. Getting him to that game, you're relatively healthy, was my number one goal. I wanted to get you to game 87, relatively healthy, so you can go out the way you should go out on the floor playing, saying goodbye to everybody. Number two was obviously, you know, have a good game. And number three, if we win, okay. If we don't, I want you to have a good game and go out the way you, you know, the way you want to go out. Fourth quarter, you know, seven minutes left, something like that in the game. You know, he's sitting at like 38, 40, and I'm sitting there looking up going, man, this, this kid got 40. That mandatory time out at about the six minute mark. So going over there to the bench, and I remember I was looking at him and he was, and I was like, okay, I, I know what tired looks like. You, 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 you damn near done. And, and I said, you got seven more minutes left in that body of yours? <sighs> Absolutely. <laughs>